21st Precinct, Detective Goldman. What do you mean, Rob? Held up? Where is it? 35 or 39? What is it there? The bar? How many hold up? You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. I'll send the officers right over there. Yeah, right away. They'll be there. Okay. Yeah. 21st Precinct, transcribed. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my day tour, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. It was a cold, windy day in the precinct, and our patrol problems had been increased enormously because of men drawn away from the command for temporary duty elsewhere. Orders had come via teletype at 7 a.m. from the Bureau of Orders to detail four men to the Manhattan West Borough Command because of a parade on Broadway. In addition, the Shah of Iran had been scheduled to visit the exhibit of ancient Persian relics at the Metropolitan Museum of Art at 11 a.m., and consequently, six patrolmen and a sergeant were assigned from the 21st to duty on Fifth Avenue in the vicinity of the museum. Because we were short of men in the precinct for the day, I went out on patrol in sector car number two as soon as I had turned out the platoon and remained out for the balance of the morning. In the meantime, the everyday business of the precinct went on. For instance, Detectives Ralph Scanlon and Chris Vitale, investigating the armed robbery of a bar and grill the previous night, parked their car on 3rd Avenue in the 80s and crossed the street under the L structure toward a small hotel, the entrance to which was wedged between two stores. The visit to the hotel was in response to a tip from an informant, sometimes reliable, sometimes not, but worth checking out because a customer had been shot during the course of the robbery. What do you say? You want to jump in for coffee after we get through here? Yeah, Pete, sure. This doesn't turn out to be anything. We'll go down the street there. Yeah. Okay. Do they even have a clerk on the job? Oh, he must be around someplace. What's the matter? I don't know. Something's the matter with me. When I don't get any sleep, I seem to get tired. Oh, I think you should see a doctor. Somebody could walk away with this joint. There's no rooms. We're all filled up. We don't want a room, Pop. Come in. Oh, you're a detective from the station house. Yeah, that's right. I didn't recognize you for a minute. I was in back getting some reading matter. You can go nuts in this job if you don't have something to read, you know. What can I do for you? Look, Pop. You know, it's funny. I was just dancing through here. It says, for the 15th, with Jupiter in the ascendancy, that a friend in a high civic post may be a valuable assistance to you. Do you go for astrology? Never touch the stuff. Mm. Listen, Pop, we're interested in a guy that... Excuse me, I've got to get the phone. All right, go ahead. Hotel. Who? Uh, How do you spell it? Double F or double S? No, no, nobody here like that registered. Okay, yeah. Let's see your register, Pop. Yeah, sure, help yourself here. <clears throat> you know, somebody left a couple of these astrology books around here once, and I got kind of interested in it. I'm uh, Aries. Myself. Yeah? But when you get right down to it, two-thirds of the stuff they print in there is just plain guesswork. Then well, why do you read it? Well, I'm the kind of guy which doesn't like to miss any bets, especially with Mercury dominant. Uh, what are you looking for there now? Maybe I can help you. What's this guy's name registered here? I can't read the writing. That's uh, Binfield. Floyd R. Binfield. What room's he in? Uh, he's in 22. You know something? I thought there was something the matter with him when he checked in. He looks like a Sagittarius. I had him pegged for a Sagittarius. When did he check in? Well, yesterday. Yesterday morning, just about this time. Is he in his room now? Yeah, he's in there. Have you seen him this morning? 
Yeah, I seen him. He came down for coffee and he went back up. He's in there. Where is 22? Up the stairs, straight down the hall, and the first one around the bend. Uh, what'd he do, this guy? We've got a couple of things we want to talk to him about. Where do we get these characters? Where do they come from? Don't ask me. Let's have the pass key. Uh, listen now, do you want me to come up and open the room for you? We want you to just stay here. Right here. Oh, he's a tough customer, huh? We don't know. We'll find out after we talk to him. Yeah. I always like the way you guys say talk. How about the pass key? Yeah. Yeah. Be my guest. Thanks. Oh, uh, <clears throat> listen. Uh, yeah? What's your birthday? June. June 10th. Oh, you're all right. Gemini. Don't you worry. That's good to hear. Well, at least he's here, Ralph. Yeah. Oh, uh, listen. Yeah? If you need some help now, just holler. Okay, Pop. All he's got to be is the right guy. We'll find that out soon enough. That way. Some bar out near where she works there. In, in Long Island City. You stay in the bar very long? 
Well, yeah, it's a pretty long time. How long? Oh, until about 1 30, 2 o'clock in the morning, I guess. What's this girl's name? Uh, Martha. Martha what? Martha what? Uh, well, to tell you the truth, I don't remember her last name. Yeah, she told me what it was, but it kind of went over my head. I thought you said she was a friend of yours. Well, I know her. Yeah, I met her yesterday. That's just an expression of friend of mine. You remember where the cafe she works is? Yeah, sure. I've been there a lot of times. Listen, what's the beef? Is, 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 is there something serious? Because if there is, I, I got a right to know what it's all about. Don't you agree with me? This Martha can account for your time last night, huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Every minute. Well, then relax. You've got nothing to worry about. Okay, okay, sure. So, how about taking these things off, huh? Well, I'll tell you, Floyd. Maybe you've got nothing to worry about. But we have. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. After making a thorough search of the room, Detectives Vitaly and Scanlon returned to the station house with their prisoner. They took him, still in handcuffs, through the muster room where the desk officer, Lieutenant Gorman, and Sergeant Waters were on duty, through the back room and up the stairs to the second floor where the 21st Detective Squad is located. All right. Back that way. All you got to do is talk to her. Okay. Yeah, we know. Go on inside. Yeah, sure. That way. 21st Squad, Detective Goldman. Okay, hold his head. Hi, Pete. Hi, Goldman. Where'd you lose it, mister? Yeah. Yeah. All right, do you know where the station house is? Yeah, that's right. You come in here and make a report of it. Come up to the uh, detectives. Yeah. Okay, you're welcome. On the second floor. Okay. Well, who's you got here, Scanlon? The champ? You thought he was the champ. He didn't last one round. Is Lieutenant in, Goldman? Yeah, he's in. Anybody with him? No. Sit down there a minute, Floyd. Listen, couldn't you take these things off now? Uh, please sit down. Yeah, I want to talk to the boss, Reed. I'll watch him. Yeah. Hey, uh, how about reaching in my pocket for a cigarette, huh? Which pocket? Yeah. This one right here. Yeah. It's Charlie, Lieutenant. Come in. Oh, uh, Reed. Lieutenant? You got that boy? Yes, this has got him out there. What does he have to say for himself? Well, he denies it. Yeah. He says he was out with a girl between 9.30 and 2 in the morning. He was sitting in a bar in Long Island City. That's what he said, huh? Yes, sir. What do you think? Well, he gave Scanlon and me a hard time when we hit the door. The boy wanted to fight. Uh-huh. But both of us had put him down on the bed and get the cuffs on him. He's still full of fight? Uh, well, he's cooled down some, Lieutenant. And what do you think? He one of the two that heisted that place last night? That beats me, Lieutenant. He fits. But if his story about being with his girl stands up, I guess he isn't. Well, let's talk to him, huh? Yes, sir. Bring him in. All right. Just a second. 21st Squad, Lieutenant King. All right. 21st Squad, Lieutenant King. Captain Kennelly, Matt. Yes, sir. Matt, uh, I got a call from Inspector McBride. He wants an explanation of my endorsement on that gun permit renewal we were talking about. I guess you'll get a call, too. Just a second, Captain. Yeah. Pete, I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, yes, sir. Bring that boy in when I call you. Yes, sir. What do you say, Pete? He's busy on the phone. He'll be with us in a minute. Look, I got a lot of things to do today, you know. Assistant shopping floor? I got plenty to do. Sure. How do you spell lavalier? Never mind how do you spell it. What is it? Oh, I know. The lady had her stolen. L-A-V-A-L-I-E-R-E. Ah, muchas gracias. Hey, is this going to take long, do you think? Well, that depends on what you've got to say to the lieutenant. So what can I say to him? I don't even know what I'm supposed to be here for. What am I supposed to be here for? How do you for? spell, uh, Chatelaine? Stolen from the same lady? Yep. You ought to quit. Start over again. I'm not sure. You better look it up. If I'm supposed to have done something, I've got a right to know what it is. Sure you know. So what is it? Chatelaine, the brooch-like class or hook from which a watch is worn suspended. Hmm. Didn't get a liberal education in this job. Okay, V. Yes, sir. Come on, Floyd. Come on, Floyd. Just want to know what it's all about. Well, you came to the right place. Inside. Oh, Cannon. Lieutenant. Sit down there, Floyd. Here. Sit down. Floyd. Lieutenant King. Floyd Benfield. Pleased to meet you. Lieutenant, ask me to take these things off of me. I'll admit I lost my head a little before, but I guarantee I won't give you no trouble. I guarantee it. 
Take them off and scan them. Well, they're mine, Lieutenant. I'll get them. Hold out your hands, Floyd. I appreciate it. Just hold still. I do. I really do. All right. Relax, Floyd. Excellent. Let's get right down to business, eh, Floyd? Yeah, that's all right with me. Good. Now, these detectives came to talk to you this morning, and you tried to fight your way out. Well, it was a mistake. You see, I thought there was somebody else. A couple of hustlers that tried to put the bite on me. All right, maybe you did think that. Now, you told them you were with some girl between 9.30 last night and 2 this morning. Yeah, yeah, it's like Martha. We, we were in this bar out in Long Island City. Then you couldn't have been one of the two guys that stuck up a bar and grill on Lexington Avenue about 11 o'clock. No, of course not. Well, sometimes we get information that's a little bit wrong, Floyd. Oh, sure, sure. That could happen to anybody. I appreciate that. This girl's name is Martha, you say? <sighs> yeah, that's right. What's her last name? Well, I don't really know that. She told me, but I had a couple of drinks, you know, and it couldn't sink in. Where can we find her? I, I told them she works in this cafe right near there where the bar was where we were drinking after she got off out in Long Island City there. You know where the cafe is? Uh, oh, sure. Now, look, Floyd. Yeah. This was a pretty good tip I got on you. Not to my way of thinking. The guy I came from isn't wrong once in a year. Well, this is the time, believe me. I could put you in the car, and we could drive over to Long Island City, and we could look around for this cafe and this Martha. But it could be we'd have a time finding her. Isn't that right? Oh, we would find her. But we might have a time. Well, as a matter of fact, I, I don't know that neighborhood too good. Now, this bar on Lexington Avenue that was stuck up last night, there were two bartenders in there and five or six customers besides the one that was shot. Oh. Well, was he shot dead? Caught him right here. Doctor says he'll be all right. Oh, that's good to hear. Well, the two bartenders say they could recognize both of the stick-up men any time, any place, anywhere. They described them head to toe to a T. Some of the customers in there said they could recognize both. Some said they could recognize one or the other. One guy said he couldn't remember what either of them looked like. Well, that's just, I guess some people got better memories than others. I suppose we ride out to Long Island City and we look around for this cafe. Suppose even we locate this Martha you were talking about. Suppose she says she was drinking with you between 9.30 and 2 in the morning. Yeah. Why should I believe her any more than I believe you? Well, it's two people's words. The best thing to do is get those bartenders and a couple of the customers in here and let them have a look at you. Gee, if we could only go out and locate Martha... Well, you're the guy they're going to make you. Don't worry about that. Why don't you stop wasting the time of everybody concerned and tell us the truth about this thing? That's what I've been doing. Now, you know, there's nobody named Martha. Just grab that out of thin air. You and another guy put the heist on that bar last night, didn't you? Well, let's use the kid here. That's right. You'd get those witnesses down here. They'd make me in a minute. In less than a minute. Okay. It was me. Who was the other guy with him? Well, if I tell you, what's in it for me? Who was the other guy with you? Oh. His name is Ted Bryan, Bill Ted Bryan. Where does he live? I don't know exactly. What do you mean you don't know exactly? I don't, I don't. He's got a place in New York, a room someplace. You don't know where? Well, he never told me where. The only thing he told me was sometimes he stays with his aunt. Where does she live? Out there in Bayside. What's his aunt's name? It beats me. He never told me. Never told you much, did he? He don't talk much. Where are the guns you used last night? I never had a gun. There was only one gun. Bill had it. You still got it? Well, he had it when I left him. Anything in this room up there, V? No weapons, Lieutenant. About $185 in cash, and that's all. Did that money come out of the bar and grill? Yeah, that's where it come from. When did you see Bill last? Right after the deal. We split up the money. He went his way. I went mine. Did you make plans to meet him again? Well, he knew where I was staying. He said he'd be in touch with me. How many other deals were you with him on? Just this one. This was the only one. In New York, that is. Where else? Well, we worked a little bit in Boston last week. I told you I was in Boston tonight. Yeah, you told me. Well, there was a couple of little small deals up there. Why'd you go to Boston? Well, to tell you the truth, it was Bill's idea. He knows a girl up there. He wanted to see her. It was his idea to do some work to pay the expenses. Where'd you go after you left Bill last night? I went and had a couple of drinks. Hey... I'll bet you I know where you got that information on me. There was a couple of guys I was drinking with. Yeah, uh, I guess I said too much. I guess you did. Yeah, me and my big mouth. My big mouth gets me into trouble every time. That's an unbeatable combination for getting into trouble. A big mouth and a little brain. Lieutenant King continued to interrogate the suspect until he had obtained all the information he believed to be in the man's possession. 
In the meantime, a detective called the Bureau of Criminal Identification at police headquarters, 240 Center Street. The name William Tedburn was checked through the files, and within a few minutes, Lieutenant King received the information that a man of that name, and answering the same general physical description, had been arrested three times on charges of robbery and grand larceny, and had one conviction. The folder which listed the relatives of William Tedburn showed that he did in fact have an aunt residing in Bayside, Queens, and on the occasion of one of his arrests, gave her address as his own residence. The New York County District Attorney's Office was notified, and an assistant district attorney came to the 21st Detective Squad to question the suspect already under arrest and to assist the detectives in arranging a lineup at which the victims and witnesses would have the opportunity to make an identification. Two detectives were sent to check out the other addresses given by the suspect William Tedburn at the time of his previous arrest, and the hotel in which Floyd Binfield resided was planted in the event he showed up there. Lieutenant King instructed Detectives Vitale and Scanlon to drive to Bayside to the residence of Tedburn Vant. At 1.15 p.m., they found the street, parked the car down the block, and walked back toward the two-story brick house. Well, this is a pretty nice neighborhood here. Yeah. Must be rough on the ants. Probably rough on the parents. Okay. See those aluminum stumps there? Yeah. That's what I want to get. What? Are you kidding? They cost an arm and a leg. You can get them financed, FHA. You still got to pay for them. You've got to pay for everything. You think he's there? Well, he could be. There's someone. Yes? Is Bill home? Well, no, not right now. Where is he? Do you know? Well, no, I don't. Are you friends of his? We're police officers. Oh. Do you mind if we come in? Well, all right. Is Billy in trouble again? Well, we want to see him about something. What's he done? He promised me he wouldn't get into anything after the last time. He went away for nearly three years. That should have been enough for him. Should have been, yes. Yeah. Is it something serious? Well, we don't know. It could be nothing at all. Oh, well, that's good. Was he home last night? Yes, he was home. He came home after I went to bed. And he left early this morning. He didn't even have his breakfast. Do you mind if we take a look in his room? Well, I don't know. We won't disturb anything. Well, do you think you ought to, really? Yes, I think so. Well, it's upstairs. Thank you. I don't know why that boy should get in trouble. He's had a good education and all that. And he's got a trade. He worked at it. He could make good money. Well, that's the way it goes, I guess. It's that one right there. Now, you won't disturb anything. No, ma'am. We'll leave everything the way we find it. Let's try this. Well, there's just his clothes in there. Oh, yes, ma'am. We know. Ah, look at this. What? Two empty shells. What are they, 38? Yep. That's how the gun was described. What if it's around? I got an idea where it is. It's on his hip. You should really have to go through Billy's things. I'm sorry, but we'd like to. You think he'll be home today? Well, I don't know. He didn't say. Does he usually come home? Well, usually, yes, but he didn't say. Do you mind if we wait around for him? Well, do you really have to? We should. Well, all right. You really should. Well, you know, that sounded like his car out in front. Uh, can you look out this window and see if it's him? Is it? Yes, it's Billy. Is he coming in the house? Yes, he's getting out of the car. He's staying here. In here? If he calls, do you answer him? Tell him you're upstairs, but stay right here. All right. Come on, Pete. Must I stay right here? Right there, yes. Pete, get in that bedroom across there. Okay, that's a good idea. Are you set? Yeah, all set. Easy. Here he comes. Abby? Abby, 
All right, Bill, get him up. Hey, hey, he's healed. Stop it, Bill. Stop. Get him. Stop. What do you think? Let's go. All right. Watch him. Get his gun. Yeah. is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct transcribed the factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolmen's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Ethel Everett, Santos Ortega, John Larkin, Bill Smith, Larry Haynes, and Bill Lipton. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. John Schaefer speaking. <laughs>